tonight, I just want to kind of piggyback right on something that I spoke this morning. And uh, I wasn't necessarily going to focus as much on this tonight, but I just kind of felt like the stirring of God uh, would have me to speak on this and uh, preach from the Word of God. And uh, sometimes God kind of changes things around for us, doesn't He? Amen. So turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number 3. Ecclesiastes 3. Then when you found that, turn over to James, chapter number 1. Amen. You know, when we start out serving God, um, the Word of God says that He is going to finish the work that He began in us. Now, I know some folks here, life may have brought to you situations that uh, you struggle with trusting people because of your situations. Some people can be stagnant and stagnated in their life because they doesn't, don't ever really learn to trust people because of maybe something that happened in the past. But I want to tell you tonight that you can trust God. Amen. You can trust the hand of God. He's faithful. He will take care of you. And uh, I want to confidently help you tonight uh, understand that God is going to do something great and beautiful in your life. And that it's important that we trust Him with all the details, whether good or bad, in our life. Amen. We've got to trust Him. Uh, Solomon here is older in his life. Brother David, you read from Ecclesiastes. Uh, you know, he's older in his life. And, and so he's doing some reflecting. Uh, you, you know, his folks will do that. Uh, maybe even a lot of us here, we reflect back over our life. And uh, we see some things that if we could, we would have focused and done them better. Uh, we're proud of those things. And then there are times where we look back and we say, wow, I wish that I, I wouldn't have done those things. And uh, Solomon says here in the beginning of this book, Brother Eli, that he said, you know, I found that there's a lot of follies in life. He said, I, I had parties, I had relationships, I had, Brother David, I had big houses and every lavish thing about it. But I found that it's all folly and it's all vanity that really the only thing that brings hope and peace and real uh, satisfaction are the things of God. Amen. Oh, that God would help every young person to sink their teeth into it. And God would help every middle-aged person to stay focused on it. And God would help every older-aged person to realize that uh, there's nothing in life that means anything but the things of God. Amen. Amen. Truly, that's all it means. And so he writes and he says that everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. God made the seasons. God made the day. God made the night. Amen. My wife and I were talking about creation. He makes dark and He makes light. God doesn't need the sun, moon, and the stars to have light and darkness. Amen. He didn't need them. He created them without the sun, moon, and stars. And, but He gave them to us. And He gave us the solar system. And He put everything right in place that we would have seasons and we would have days. And so uh, everything about life has, has a cycle. And everything about life, it has a rhythm. Amen. The rhythm and the cycle of life. It's very interesting in how it works. Amen. You know, uh, uh, it's just interesting. I was going to say something, but I'm not going to say it. Amen. But, but, but there is a rhythm and a cycle of life. And he said there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. There's a pl time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break that down. A time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to get the stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, a time to lose, and a time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rent, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak. Does anyone ever get that time to speak and a time to keep silent mixed up? Your seasons? I've done that before. Amen. You know, there are seasons to that. 
And he said, there's a time of love, and a time of hate, and a time of war, and a time of peace. Amen. So the cycles of life, how interesting that God has provided all that for us. And so there's cycles of everything. But understanding that in the cycles of life that God is working and God is shining through you. When you took on the responsibility of becoming uh, an heir of Jesus Christ, when you took on the blood of Jesus Christ, you cast off the, the, the garments of heaviness, the garments of sorrow, you put on the, the garments of joy and gladness, serving after Christ, there became a responsibility now to you to show the world that Jesus is working and moving in your life. You have trusted Him to take care of all the details of the past, but you trust Him now in the present, and He's working out all the details of your future, and you are confident that He who began a good work in you is going to finish that work, and He's going to make everything beautiful in His time. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe that God is going to make everything beautiful in its time, no matter what the season of life is for you? I said this morning that, you know, we don't really care for the autumn and the winter cycle of life. That means that they're difficult times. That means that they're cold times. That means that there are dying times. There are barren times. But we can trust God in the cycles of life, whether it's spring and summer or whether it's autumn and fall, because in the end result is going to be that He makes everything beautiful in His time. So that means right now where you are in life, you can trust Him with it. Whether it's a good season, a good cycle, or it's a not so good cycle, God is working and moving. Once again, I want to ask you, do you really confidently trust God that He makes everything beautiful in His time? Amen. Do you? Amen. I have to tell you, I'm glad that spring's here. There's part of me that, Brother Wally, I really enjoy that there is all kinds of plants popping up that I planted, Brother Justin, last year around my yard. And Sister Rachel, it looks better than all those empty uh, trees or all those dried up leaves and all that just bareness. It looks better. I like this season because it's a good season. But you know, we had to trust God in the season of winter, Brother David, that spring was going to come. It seemed like a long time Sister Dietrich in coming, but it is here. He makes everything beautiful in its time. Think about this. He says that there's a time to kill and a time to kill. And we don't like that word uh, kill and we don't like that word die. Amen. But, but do you realize that from the time you were born, scientists tell us that we begin to die? Uh, the cells in our body are dying. One by one, and they're replaced. In fact, this is an interesting thought. Science goes on to tell us, Brother David, that within seven years, all of your cells are new. So you know what? You are new, Brother Dennis, than what you were seven years ago. Sister, not you're new, than what you were seven years ago. And so they are dying, amen, so in, in that God is working and God is moving. How many of you look in the mirror and say, I like the cells that was in my body seven years ago better? But he is still working and moving in our life. And we have to trust him that in every season he is moving. Folks, uh, Elaine, I didn't know you would be here tonight, but let me just uh, let me just clear up the fog a little bit. And I don't think maybe you thought this, but you know, some people may look and say, well, why did God allow Elaine to get cancer? You know, uh, or why did God give Elaine cancer? Maybe that's the way I should put it. God didn't give Elaine cancer, but God allowed it. And you know what? And the beauty of it all, He saw her through it. Amen? So in all those things that He allows in our life, amen, we know this, that He is working something beautiful in it. And so we may not like certain seasons and certain cycles and rhythm of life, but we have to trust God that He is working and moving in our life. And the end result will be something that is beautiful. We can trust Him with it. 
Just as Joseph trusts God with his life, that the end result would be that God would give him the vision, the dream that he wants and give it uh, to him as a young man. It seemed like it was a long way off and, and there was a lot of bad things that happened. God allowed Brother David a lot of cycles to take place, but when the end cycle comes, Sister Tina, there was beauty in that. And we may not like some of the cycles and you look back at your life and you say, man, I don't like some of the things that I've been through. But if you've trusted God, God in those cycles, you look and you see that the end result is faith has grown deeper in Jesus Christ and He has done something beautiful in your life. He has matured you spiritually and you would have never gained that maturity had you not gone through that cycle of life that God allowed you to go through. So Solomon looks back over his life and he says, boy, my life's been a lot of cycles. There's been some spring and summer and fall and winter, but I have to tell you that in all the things, even though from one another each season the, the, the healing and, and the killing and the breaking down and the building up and the weeping and the crying the mourning but the dancing and all oh, that God has worked something beautiful in me I found a lot of folly in life but the end result is when I trusted God that is what really mattered in life so I want us to sink our teeth in that tonight amen that we can trust God with everything in our life Amen. Every one of us are here at different seasons and cycles of life. Amen. But just the same as we're, 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 we're very vastly different, there's one uh, uh, common denominator, and that is God is working beauty in us as vastly different as our cycles and rhythms of life are. <coughs> I love that. Amen. The Bible says He hath made everything beautiful in His time. And He has also set the world in their heart. That word world is not necessarily what we may think of world, but He has set eternity in their hearts. There's something different about folks who live their life in the rhythms and the cycles of life with eternity in their hearts because they know that God is making something beautiful out of them. I love, uh, I, I love the way that Brother Brim on Tuesday evening spoke about how that in our life there are things as believers that, that, that we're saved but we, we can make mistakes and we go back underneath the blood and there's things that we do that aren't necessarily pleasing to God and not honorable with God with everything in our life. But, 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 but God doesn't mean that we're not saved. It simply means that we have to trust Him in those areas so that if eternity is really in our hearts, if we're driven by eternity, that we know the end result that God is making something beautiful. So tonight, I, I don't know why I feel so heavy hearted with this. I need to tell you, I feel heavy in my heart that folks need to know that we can trust God. That He's working something beautiful. You may look in the mirror and not look and like what you look at and like what you see. But we have to trust God that He's working something great in us. Not only is He working something great in us, but we are being an example to other believers and to the world. Paul challenged Timothy and he said, but be thou an example of the believer. So whatever we're going through, we are an example to the believer. Then we need to be showing beauty to other believers. And we need to be showing Christ to the world, even if we feel like we are broken. James writes and he says it this way in James chapter number one, verse number two. He said, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. It, it, uh, uh, not so much the glory of sin, but 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 uh, trials and testing. Do you know every one of us here are going to be tested and tried? Probably this week isn't even going to pass by without one of you being tested, each of us being tested and tried in some area of our life. Now some trials last maybe weeks and months. Now others may last moments, but we are tested and we are tried. And James says, brother, count all joy when you fall. Fall. I like how he says that word. He says, consider it a gift. Uh, it's pure joy. Uh, do you know that, that, that what jewelers do is when they look at what a, a, a diamond 
being very real, real, they will give it the water test. They'll drop it in water and they'll see if it's really vibrant and bright and gives the glistening. If, it's, if it doesn't do the water test, it means that it really isn't a, a pure gem, Brother Wally. Do you know sometimes your sister Tina are going to walk through the waters? The floods, they're going to feel like they're about to overtake us. Amen. But God has promised us that the floods wouldn't overtake us, nor would the fire kindle upon us. We have to trust Him that He's making something beautiful in our life. So it's saying, I'm trusting you, God, even though this situation is fresh and new to me, even though it's not really what I want, but I'm still going to trust you in this cycle and rhythm of life because I know that you're making something beautiful out of me. You see, things don't always appear to be as they are. How many has ever noticed that that caterpillar that's walking across uh, your, 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 your yard or climbing up the side of your house, you look at that and it doesn't look very attractive and lovely, amen, but God is doing a work in that caterpillar that someday it's going to be a beautiful butterfly, amen. We don't necessarily see the end result right away, but we have to trust God with that, amen. There is a metamorphosis that God is working and doing in our life and the spirit, amen, and it's going to produce beauty if we will trust him. Amen. amen. So count it all, Job. Job said that man is born into trouble and, 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 and life was a few days of trouble. He talks about the sparks flying upward. Amen. Life can sometimes feel like that, that it is a few days of trouble. Amen. But, but even for us as Christians, we do not need to lose our luster. We do not need to lose our beauty. Amen. When we go through this. Amen. Because God is working something great in us. They say that diamonds are really coal that is underground, that is put under pressure and under force. And with pressure and force over a long period of time, that old chunk of coal turns into a diamond. Hey, Mr. Rachel, we're from West Virginia. We know about coal. You folks up here know about coal too. Uh, anthracite here by two minutes in West Virginia. But we know about that. And, and, and for me walking down the road growing up, it was nothing but a wall. to see the coal trucks coming by and there'd be chunks of coal lying along the road. It was nothing to kick them down the road. I never got anything of it. Uh, but I'll guarantee if I would have saw a diamond, I wouldn't have been doing that. <laughs> You see, we have to know that even though it may not look beautiful and valuable, that God is doing something. And we can trust Him. We can trust Him. So He said, my brother, I count all joy when you fall into divers or different types of temptation. Amen. It, that, that word count doesn't necessarily mean one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've been through seven of these now, Brother Doug. I've reached the number of perfection, completion, Brother David. I'm done. That, that, that's not what count. It, it, it means consider. You consider that when we're going through this, that we need to consider it as being joy. I'm preaching to me too. I'm preaching to me that I have to trust God that in all the details of my life, even though Brother Craig, there may be those moments that are trying and those seasons I don't want to be in, those cycles, that I have to consider that I need to face this with joy because God is working and moving in me. Evaluate it. But like Paul said, rejoice in the Lord again. And again, I say rejoice. He was in prison when he wrote that. Amen. But rejoice in the Lord. You know why? Because we can trust Him. Others may have let you down. But God won't. Right. What does trust mean? It means that we can rely upon someone for strength. But even we can rely on Him for strength. I promise you, no one in here probably would ever want to let me down. And I would never want to let you down. But sometimes our resources just aren't able to do everything everybody wants. But God says, God's resources are able. So here it is, Paul, prison. He says, count it all joy when you're challenged. When unplanned things come up, occurrences surround you. Here it is that, uh, you know, when we fall, remember the story of the Good Samaritan? Here it was that the man was traveling between towns, and the Bible says that he fell, Sister Dietrich. He wasn't planning on being robbed and beaten, but he fell. It took him unaware. Same thought here when we fall into these situations, the cycles of life. 
It can change very quickly. But we can trust God with the changes. We can know that He's making something beautiful out of you. Maybe there's some folks that you look at them and maybe others would say, man, there's nothing very pretty about them. There's nothing handsome about them. I don't say anything, but you start listening to them and their story. And you see the beauty of Jesus Christ and the work of the hand of God in their life and what the Holy Ghost is doing because they trust in God. And the end result was something marvelous and beautiful. Falling into temptation. Turbulence. Paul was at that place, the ocean, where two cross waters met, and there was turbulence. He was expecting Brother Craig a place of safety, but there he felt turbulence. Anyone ever think that you're going to be at this place in life? Maybe you're at an age where you thought, man, at this age of my life, I'm going to have, I'm going to have many. Or maybe if you have this much money, or you have these goals that you have set, you think, I'm going to be comfortable here. But you find that there are turbulence. Crosswalks. But we can trust God that He makes all things beautiful in His time. See, in the book of Hebrews, and I like this, Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 11, He said, Now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruits of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. How many times in our life, and, and there are things that God allows in our life, you know, uh, I, I don't believe God says I'm going to let the car break down on your brother David. You know, uh, I hit a deer, brother David hit a deer, I don't thank God. So I'm just going to let them hit a deer because. You know, I, I have my finger up to get them. I want to frustrate them. Run. No. I truly believe this, that God says, and those are simple things that I'm saying, but God says, listen, I'm going to give them a little bit of what I call chastisement, some discipline. And at the moment, you think, well, it seems grievous. But then we look, and it renders joy. Because it's the privilege of seeing how an almighty God works. Amen. It's the privilege of seeing how an almighty... Sister Rachel, you testified this morning. And, 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 and I have to tell you, I've beaten myself up. I, I, I thought these folks had electricity back on. Amen. But their house did not. And so they went through that episode of not having electricity. And she talked about how that the Lord provided for them. Amen. It's, it's grievous. But in the end, you look back and think, boy, this was an inconvenience. But on how the hand of God worked. On God's hand worked. Do you trust it in that? The inconveniences of what goes wrong in the middle of life. But yet we can trust God because if He didn't do those things, right now it seems grievous. Amen to our, our soul and to our spirits. And it's vexing. Amen. But we have to change our attitude to say, wait a second. I need to consider and I need to accept joy because God is working here. And what is God up to in my life? Amen. We look beyond the trial. We see the end of it. Do you know why Paul and Silas could sing in the middle of the midnight hour in prison? Because they looked beyond what was the current. And they looked at the victory that they knew God was going to see them through. Did they know, Brother Craig, that God was going to send out of angels? Did, 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 did they know that, that an earthquake was going to rock? They didn't know any of that stuff, Sister Doc. But what they did know is that God was going to work for them. Amen. If we would look to the end and know that however this turns out, God is going to work for me. It will change our life. <laughs> The Word of God say, says, No, in the trying of the faith, it worketh patience. What does patience and that endurance mean? Sister Dietrich, that endurance means that we learn to wait upon God. And so if it draws us to our knees, Sister Tina, there's beauty as we're entwined with God. 
God is working and God is moving. I want to close by looking at a couple of people. David said, I waited patiently upon the Lord. And he inclined unto me and he asked and he heard my, my cry. And he brought me up out of, of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock, and he established my goings. He put a new song in my mouth, even a song of praise to our God. He said, Many shall see it in fear and shall trust the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as, uh, as turneth aside to lies. Brother David, David said this, Amen, I cried to God in that pit, in the fiery clay. And he heard me, Sister Dietrich, and he brought me up, and he set me on a rock, and he established my goings. Brother Justin, he put a new song of praise in my mouth, even a praise to my God. Amen. And many hear it. God's doing something beautiful in you. God hears, trust Him. It was Paul. He said, no, there is no temptation uh, that, that has taken you such as common to man. But God is faithful. Amen. He's not going to uh, tempt you to be, uh, He's not going to suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. But with the temptation, He's going to make, make a way of escape, Brother Craig. And He's going to make a way that you're able to bear it. Something beautiful. You can trust Him. Paul again, he said, we are bound to thank God always for your brother as it is meet because your faith groweth exceedingly in charity of every, every one of you all toward each other about it so that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Amen. But let patience. But let patience. For a good and perfect work on you, brother. Amen. The word of God says this. Amen. Mr. Bethany will come to Jim. The word of God says that if we commit our way to the Lord, trust also in Him, and He will bring it to pass. I already said this this morning. But I think Brother David, one of the greatest examples of sometimes looking and not seeing is Jesus Christ upon Calvary. Brother Doug, we can never lose that picture. It seemed hopeless. Calvary. There Jesus was. And all those who followed Him and wanted a word from Him and wanted healing but a prayer. The masses. They were coming down to just a few individuals before the cross. God allowed His own Son to die. How can this be? Death, agony. He took upon Him the sins of the world. I mean, the cross was the most agonizing, horrible picture that any of us could ever look at. They look back. The cycles, the rhythm. God had a plan for his only begotten son. And there he died. The father couldn't even bear to see his son. The sky grows dark. The crowds deplete. They're suspended between earth and heaven. The very son of God gasping for breath. And he finally cries out. It is finished. You talk about a picture. You look at your life and you may say, how can any good come of this? How can any beauty come out of this? They know the story. Three days later, Sister Rachel, the power of the Holy Ghost, that same power of Pentecost, moved in that tomb and brought the Savior back from the grave. Amen. He is not here. Come and see. Amen. Come and see the place where my Lord lay. Amen. Talk about some beauty. Amen. The 
then Thomas as he thrust his hand uh, into where uh, Jesus, uh, he bare the, the marks of sin. Amen. The beauty that's in that, they saw him. Amen. And now he sits on the right hand of God, ever making intercession for you and I. Our God lives. He reigns. And all those around God, God fed Jerusalem. That's not what they thought. The rhythms, the cycles of life, they may not look like how the beauty comes out of this. But for the child of God, there's nothing but beauty that can come out of this. Solomon said to everything, enjoy your season. Enjoy your season. Trust God in your season. Count. Because God is working. I want this message to be about me, but as I was preparing, I was looking at some things in my life that I didn't like and I didn't want. But now I see that Brother Doug, they have earned your growth. Now I see, Brother Craig, they have earned your spiritual maturity. You know why? Because we can trust God through the cycles of life. Would you tonight? Grab hold of an L star hand and say, No, I trust you. Hey Amen. You don't like the season, you don't like what there is, but would you say, God, I trust you that you are making something beautiful of me? Would you look beyond the moment and the present, and would you look at eternity, eternities in their hearts? Amen. They knew that God was making something beautiful. Would you gather in tonight? And would you allow the beauty of God to be reflected through you as He works His way in His plan?